good afternoon satya uh, dear viewers and our readers today we with have we have with us ms satyavati barera ceo of pwc india ms barera is the first woman in a big four firm in the country to hold this position ms barera has over 35 years of diverse experience across several sectors and is also a member of pwc india's leadership team a very warm welcome it's such a delight and pleasure to have you with us with as one of our awardees for the fourth edition of peak live women inspire awards these awards are curated to felicitate women achievers like you thanks for being with us today ms barera i'd like to start with the beginning of your career starting off in 1980 how was it for a woman to enter accounting services back then in 1980s yeah i think um, 1980 almost uh, you know four decades back um, there were very few women in the accounting profession i mean be it in professional firms or even in the industry mm-hmm. um so it was um, you know quite a, i mean it was a challenge because there was no um, um i mean there weren't others so we were probably doing many things for the first time mm-hmm. uh, but in a way uh, i think um, we or i was quite prepared for it and um, i mean whatever challenges they were uh, i mean we dealt with it because uh, we knew we were going to be uh, you know the the early uh, uh, people in this profession mm-hmm. um i mean i i it, it was uh, more tough for me because um, i was in delhi and uh, you know there were some women profession in the metros but in the smaller cities probably they weren't and i was in delhi but just then uh, my father was in the army got posted to a small city in uh, in uh, in the state of jammu in kashmir oh okay uh, i tried to go with him but uh-huh. um, there were no opportunities for accountants over there so then i came back okay. and i lived with a friend and a family oh and i'm uh, extremely grateful to them and that's how i actually started my journey as an accountant Oh so that adds another layer to the whole experience of being on your own in a big city so you know something that you can remember from those days you know bringing every day together being at work something that you can share with us well um i mean it, it was tough uh, i mean i had been in delhi because i i, I did my college from lady yes. shyam so it's not as if i wasn't here Mm-hmm. but um, i i guess just staying away from family and i would actually think more courage to my mom and dad for Absolutely. actually leaving their daughter in a yes. in a big city like delhi yes so um, it was kind of everything was new we were on our own um, you know the offices were small but very very few women right and um, more important um, i mean the office was at least ours but um, it, you know in this profession and especially when you're doing your accountancy and you're enrolled to do your chartered accountancy right. you actually have to work at the client's yes, office yes. so i yes, think yes. the whole acceptability of women um, you know at the client's office was um, sometimes a challenge and uh, because they were they were not used to seeing women and they didn't right. employ many in the finance department um so it was exciting and i think since we were mentally prepared um, i guess we took everything in in good stride and um, you know so every day was a new day so um, i would really um, i mean i i don't know but if i really think hard i would probably attribute this continuity i think a to uh, you know the whole uh, ecosystem that we had in this organization um, you know uh, mm-hmm. the support that we got and mm-hmm. i think the fact that somehow the culture of the organization actually was quite aligned to my own values yes and yes, uh, i i guess i kind of um, you know stayed on because um, it was a wonderful place wonderful colleagues and um, there was so much of uh, you know acknowledgement for what i did there was so much of learning mm-hmm. i got opportunities to do different things you know different areas of work which just kept me um, you know so engaged and uh, passionate about what i'm doing yes. that i never even thought you know the need to look out right uh, but i think more important was that i think it was such a supportive organization in those days one didn't even have policies etc so it was really the people in the organization which kind of 
you know, helped us all grow and um, kept us safe because, uh, you know, not being having many women colleagues. Mm -hmm. uh, that was an important aspect. But, you know, mm -hmm. it made it easy for us and uh, we kind of prospered. So you just continued over here. Okay. You know, uh, being a CEO, um, uh, how, what were the emotions when you learned that you were actually going to be the first CEO of, that con of our country who's been for a big four and, you know, some aspects, some tough aspects of holding this position that you think many people may have overlooked? Well, if you talk about the feelings, I mean, obviously, I, I did feel uh, really good about it. Yes. But, um, yes. More important, um, I think the fact that, uh, you know, this was uh, something that uh, came organically, I mean, from the organization. So I think was happy with the fact that the leadership thought, uh, you know, that I and had that confidence in my ability that I'll be able to deliver on this role. Mm -hmm. uh, this role was very, very different from, you know, what I'd done earlier because that mm -hmm. was more in verticals, etc. And this was really enterprise wide. Right. Also a little daunted, I mean, excited, but a little daunted because I think um, there was a lot of learning to do. I mean, I'd yeah. never done anything like this before. Mm -hmm. And it also, um, you know, the role had a lot of responsibility. Uh, Certainly, you know? yes. Yeah. So uh, that itself was a little daunting, but mm -hmm. um, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm glad I picked it up and um, uh, happy with, uh, you know, whatever I've um, you know, been able to do for the organization. Yes. Uh, incidentally, uh, 30th of September, as I mentioned, I'm going to retire March 31st. Yeah. So from 1st October, I have my successor in place. Yes. So right now, I'm sort of holding, hand holding, but right. uh, it's been a good six years in this role. Yes. Yes. So, you know, but do you think as a female leader, you had to face many more challenges than a male would have in the same industry? Or if I put it differently, the advantages and disadvantages of being a female leader that you can share with us? I can't really think of uh, many advantages, but, uh, <laughs> uh, well, you know, in the beginning, um, I mean, things were tough. And I mean, not only leader, I mean, just being a professional, a woman professional, um, things were different from, you know, I'm sure the experience that our male colleagues had. Right. I mean, I remember once um, in the beginning, um, uh -huh. you know, it was it was about, um, I mean, in this in this profession, and especially when you're in a uh, organization, a consulting organization, there are very few things that, you know, you don't make it happen. It is right. about influencing because right. you advise people and they have to follow your advice. And I remember this one gentleman actually saying, I mean, he didn't like what I was talking about. Oh, He actually said that, look, you realize that um, I became a chartered accountant even before you were born. Oh, my God. Now, I was okay. reflecting whether he would have said something like that to a, to male, a male colleague. colleague yeah. But, uh, fine. I mean, you know, that was his perspective. And sometimes yes. you just laugh it off. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, I wouldn't say there are too many advantages. But, um, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you, you, uh, your question was about a disadvantage of... Yes, both, both that you like to mention. The advantages and the disadvantages. Well... A role is a role, but I think uh, this role is tough because, mm -hmm. in a way, um, the CEO's role. I'm talking about the yes, CEO's yes. role because, in a way, uh, you know, you you have to thinly navigate between um, two important aspects. One mm -hmm. is, you know, it's your job to keep your organization safe, to right. manage all the risks, and you know, right. have the controls and processes in place. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, uh, you, you do want to make sure that you don't make it a very bureaucratic organization. Yes. The organization remains agile mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, people have the ease of doing business because otherwise, right. you know, how will we grow? Right. So I think this this uh, this navigation between these two very important aspects, I think, is what brings the challenge to this job. Right. And right. Um, also, um, mm -hmm. I think the second aspect, which was very true for us, was that um, during this period, we were very, very high growing as yeah. an organization. You know, yes. our growth rate was significant. Yes. So while you're growing, um, you know, it brings its own challenges. While it's a very happy position, but it has yes. its own challenges with the the burden on the, you know, the current infrastructure, etc. Mm -hmm. So this was the time when we also embarked on a very... Um, 
um, you know, significant transformation journey. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we actually did a whole lot of things, like, you know, a lot of things, movement to, etc. Mm -hmm. So I think it just made it more challenging that you're going on one hand and then you're yes, trying to bring about true. so many, uh, you know, changes to that's the organization. True. But all in all, I think it was a fascinating journey. Certainly, I'm glad for you. Yeah, you know, for a woman professional, a very huge aspect is also balancing the family life. And as I can tell my our readers that you are very involved mother and you've been very associated back with your family also. Please share with us some strategy that came handy to make us to strike that fine balance between family and your career and especially being a mother. I don't think there was any strategy as such. <laughs> think, okay. uh, I think, you know, my North Star has always been that um, right from the beginning, I think probably when I didn't even understand these things so well, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. was to really have a happy home and at the same time have a rewarding career. Wow, that's so beautifully now, put. It's it's kind of, I mean, I, I just, I was selfish enough and I wanted the best of both. I didn't want to give up my career, but neither mm -hmm. did I want uh, unhappy, you know, um, child and family and all of that because mm -hmm. I did think that you know even keeping the family and doing whatever was my responsibility as as well as you know what was happening in the office yeah so I think um, it was really about um, if I can say I think the first thing that I did was I actually built a good support system which is um, very important. Yes. Both at home and mm -hmm. in office also, I had a fantastic team. So I mm -hmm. could kind of weigh in on them, uh, you know, whenever I wanted. So, I mean, that also took an effort because you have to nurture talent and you have to you know, have people you can fall back on. Yeah. Uh, so that was one. Second, I think I was very, very lucky because, uh, you know, my husband was from the same profession. And, oh. you know, in fact, he was in the same firm uh, before we got married. Okay. So he was very supportive, fully understood the challenges and, you know, what's really happening in office. So I think that helped quite a bit. Yes. And um, I think it was also about, um, and I think this is important really, that, uh, you know, for me, I kind of uh, held on to a pace that I wanted. It wasn't really about whether X is getting promoted or Y. I mean, I was my right. own benchmark in a way. Right. And I kind of uh, wanted to enjoy the pace mm -hmm. and the journey. And I think mm -hmm. to a large extent, I was able to do that. Mm -hmm. So um, because I had, you know, kind of um, spaced out my whole journey, maybe mm -hmm. uh, I could have done something a year earlier. Mm -hmm. I think I was pretty um, happy in, you know, what I was doing. And I think that helped to keep that balance also. Which is important, yeah. It's very important. I think it yes. is from a sustainable career because yes. I think otherwise you just get burnt out. Yes. And then, um, you know, that's it. So I think yeah. that was probably, um, I don't know whether I strategized for it, but I think now I feel I was... <laughs> Okay. You know, but um, putting all this together, I'm sure there must have been low points as well. How do you deal with when you face with some situation which is not gone as per your expectation or is you find yeah. you send some negativity around it? Yeah, no, very, very good question. And I think I can tell you uh, everything which goes up goes down. So oh. obviously, I mean, yes. there must have been enough low points, etc., but overall, at least what I can remember, it's just been, you know, net, net positive. Yes. But um, I can say that, you know, very early on in life, because, um, you know, maybe early, there must have been a lot of, you know, some disappointments. I think I just learned to tune myself to a fact that, um, you know, to remain positive, really. So even, for example, if there was an assignment that I was mm -hmm. very keen on working on, Mm -hmm. And for some reason, I did not get that assignment. Right. You know, you can kind of get all demotivated. You can keep saying, oh, either yes. blame the um, the organization saying they're biased. Mm -hmm. Or you can say, oh, maybe I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. I kind of learned from the beginning to kind of find something good in anything which happens. Oh. And it's, okay. it's really about a mental, uh, you know, um, it's your attitude really. Yes, that's true. And it's it's very easy to feel happy about something or feel very, very sad about something. 
So mm -hmm. it was like, okay, fine. I'm not on this assignment. Maybe something better will come or maybe, okay, fine. I can spend more time with my child. I don't have to travel so much for this assignment. Yeah. yeah. So I think that helped me. And uh, it's very important because, you know, everything is not going to go your way. It That's is not true. going to happen. That's this true. is a people organization. But you have to learn to take things in your stride and then mm -hmm. you know, create a situation which is win-win in the end. Um, right. Otherwise, you'll just keep going into these little uh, depressions and, you know, whatever, and blaming yes. the whole world for whatever is happening to you. Yes, which, yes. Which I think just does not bring any joy. I mean, it's yes. very, very... And it dissuades the overall morale to it does. keep up. Yes, it just does. You know, uh, I also figured out uh, that you are associated with social causes. Uh, I could figure out two, especially which is mobile crutches and environmental awareness and net zero. Uh, why why are these two things so you know so important to you? Something that you can tell us. Well, uh, the first one, which is mobile crutches. I mean, mm -hmm. I kind of joined the um, the organization. I think it was more that I got an opportunity, um, right. you know, to um, uh, to join their um, their their board, mm -hmm. and uh, I have worked with them for almost eight nine years now, um, mm -hmm. and it was really about, um, you know, what they were saying made so much of sense. You have all the government policies which talks yeah. about child education, etc., yeah. but I think. Um, the key thing is, and okay, let me just step back and, you know, Mobile Crashes is really an organization which which is taking care or, or is focused on children, um, young children, mm -hmm. who probably don't come under the government's education policy, but mm -hmm. these are children of um, construction workers oh, okay. who are always on the move. Right. So they don't get schooling. Uh, right. And sometimes when they're very young, you know, mm -hmm. uh, they have to be there with their mother who's working right. on the construction right. site. So they build these crashes. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, that's their uh, objective, mm -hmm. which is there on the site where construction is happening so that these children can actually be there. Mm -hmm. And they can get the nutrition, which is very important because at that age, if you don't get nutrition, your brain never gets developed. Yes, that's and true. they can also have that basic in, um, education because yeah. otherwise their parents keep moving. Yes. So that's you know, something that they do. And then, of course, there is a lot of advocacy, etc. And I just thought that, you know, that whole concept of thinking of children at that age, yes. and especially of these construction workers who are always mm -hmm. on the move, I thought it was so important. Yes, uh, because the government schools and all come much later. But this is yes. those, you know, the, this is the foundation, the foundation years. Yes. So you need help, and that's why I got uh, involved in it. And then it was interesting, and I continued on the net zero part. Um, I mean, it's really. Um, I think it's become such a big. Uh, it's such a big issue, and probably one issue which is impacting the whole universe. That's you know, true. At times, you have things which are good for your country or good for one section, etc. But I think we're all facing, and it's something which is here and now. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not even something that we think will happen after a long time. And there's so much of evidence. Yes. You know, that it is all of these floods and you know now the volcano, the fire, right. the water yes. is going down. I mean, it's it's just there and it's staring mm -hmm. at us. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to get impacted. Our children for sure will get impacted. Yes. And this is something, I mean, again, you know, we have our country, we have Mr. Modi trying to do so many things about it, but it's yes. something where the organizations can do and individuals have to do. I mean, their yeah. bit. everyone has to play their bit. Right. So this was a commitment that, uh, you know, came from a global organization. And I, oh. kind of, um, you know, uh, I'm kind of leading what we're trying to do in India as part of mm -hmm. the organization. Mm -hmm. And there's so much we can do as a company um, to do mm -hmm. our bit. And uh, I just thought it's something that, um, you know, uh, we, we need to kind of, uh, I mean, it is like walking the talk and it is uh, giving the right messages from the top. So there are a lot of things that we're doing in our own organization. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, uh, you know, all corporates will do it and we'll do it as individuals also, because this is there, it's staring at us and we need to do something. And it is very important. That is very so important. true. That is very important, especially 
the kind of planet we're going to leave for the future generation and you know especially after the whole covid experience i think the awareness is a lot more yeah. for how to preserve natural uh, nature to say you know um I, i would ask i would like to ask you you know what is it that keeps you on the top of your game every day uh, right now as i'm talking to you i can sense it's so inspiring so what do you think it is hey um to be a support for your team for so many people yeah. so you know how do you do that one thing which i have realized and again all of this has just come you know over the years i'm i'm sure mm-hmm. i was not always on top of things but it's i think you need to um, you know plan well Right. for me uh, what is it that i'm going to do tomorrow or what's going to happen this week month i mean you you have to have clarity only then can you kind of you know drive things so that uh, is actually um, is, is very very important right second i think uh, it's it's just so important uh, if you have to remain top of things you need to um, you know kind of remain relevant i mean even yes. now there's so much of learning to do right. there's so many new things happening and somehow and it is an effort to remain on top of things because otherwise um, you are going to lose control um, if you really don't know what is it you know you can't right. kind of uh, dwell on you know what i did in the past and you know what worked etc so that's the other thing that um, you know one needs to constantly do and uh, i think third is absolutely you need to have good teams um, mm-hmm. you know um, because otherwise you can't do half the things you want to do and teams That's will true. only come uh, if you're able to retain talent so you know you, there is has to be something you know how you nurture them and how yes. you kind of take care of them because uh, without your teams you know you're nothing really That so is true. i i just think you just need to have good people around you yeah to um, stay on the top really yeah thank you and you know um uh, the idea of putting these awards together is to bring out the stories of these ladies who been women achievers these ladies are empowered ladies so you know what is your definition of an empowered woman especially in context to the india story today you know there is so many startups so many things what is your definition of an empowered woman um yeah i think uh, you know there could be uh, many things that can be said about uh, empowerment and empowered but you know if i kind of um, think about it and you know for me uh, it actually means uh, a woman who who has the freedom right. you know that's important who has yes. the freedom which is important to take decisions um to actually um, be um, you know to take decisions to make changes yeah uh, or, or to make choices i mean at least have the freedom to make choices and then follow it up with actions uh which will impact those choices and you know which may impact uh the life of that person or um uh, the ecosystem that that person can actually influence so i think um, that is very important the freedom of uh, making choices um uh, it is also about um you know uh, an empowered woman is someone who feels internally um satisfied yes. kind of um uh, feels right as far as uh, you know is comfortable uh, in her skin uh, you yes. know what that person is doing mm-hmm. uh, is able to you know not only think but express express her opinion uh, freely i think mm-hmm. that is very important i mean you may think many things but if you do not uh, feel you know have that courage or you don't mm-hmm. feel empowered enough to actually give your opinion to express mm-hmm. it freely then that i would say is not uh, really uh, empowerment mm-hmm. and um, it may be a word but i think there's so much behind it to become an empowered woman it's it's about you know the education getting equal opportunity right. uh, being empowered at home being empowered in the office so i mean that one word actually means a lot really 
that is true <laughs> you know we can go on talking with you but as i you know your time is very precious i just have the last question asked which is some message or advice that you'd like to give to women especially who you know who aspire to excel in this profession or maybe uh, you know aim to be where you are today i don't know our young people are so smart uh, that they don't <laughs> need too much of uh, advice if i can if i can think of my own experience and you know mm -hmm. how i have evolved really and mm -hmm. uh, what has worked for me mm -hmm. i think the first thing is um and today especially it is even more tough because people have so many options right yes it's really you know to have that long term focus that vision where do you want to be really what do you want to do i think that's very important right and then maybe smaller um, you know have that in your mind smaller milestones Right. as to how are you going to get there mm -hmm. otherwise you know with so much of happening uh, so much happening and so many choices and so many options you can actually get a little lost and you can kind of be all over the place so i think having that focus and that clarity you know what is it that you want to do mm -hmm. uh, i think is is important mm -hmm. the second thing that i feel um, is important is that you know no matter what we've done and you know we've all gone through professional courses etc right but even this profession and with so much happening it's you no know, you you have to constantly do things to remain relevant yes that's so important. always i think have that humility that you don't know everything right there is so much more to know and you right. can learn from your younger people from older people from here and there i think that is extremely important otherwise not you know you're not going to be anywhere because the whole ecosystem environment is changing so much yes. and it is an effort i mean yes. it's almost like you know a doctor now that you know you've done your mbbs but there are so many new medicines coming and yes, you have to always yes. that the same thing goes for for us you know people in technology and all of that you have to remain relevant there'll be no respect for you if you kind of don't do it yes and the third thing which i think is very important and we spoken about it earlier i think somewhere you need to keep that balance between work and life yes otherwise um, you know in your passion you might you know it's you can't say oh first 10 years let me work very hard and then the next 10 years i'll look after my family yeah. it doesn't work it like that should be right balance. i yes. think that balance is important at least for me it was important i'm sure for many women it's going to be important yes. but of course the 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 key thing is how do you um, how do you get that balance and still feel as if you are in the race really <laughs> <laughs> thanks a ton it's such a lovely and such an enlightening chat we look forward to have you with us for the